All right, if there's no further comments on the commission, then we'll move to item eight, the Jackie Robinson YMCA, project number 402960. Staff. Good morning, um, Chairman House and um, Planning Commissioners. My name is Jeff Peterson. I'm the project manager for the project before you today. The application before you today is the demolition of the existing Jackie Robinson YMCA and the construction of a new Jackie Robinson recreation facility on the existing 8.4 site. Approximately 6.19 acres of the site are within the city of San Diego and 2.1 acres of the site are located within the county of San Diego. Development of the proposed um, project requires a conditional use permit, plan development permit, and site development permit. The new YMCA um, facility would contain a total of 60,550 square feet of new building area, new sports courts and fields, parking, and other ass uh, accessory uses. The proposed facility be, be constructed in two phases. The proposed development on the 2.21 acre portion of the site is currently um, being processed through the County of San Diego as an accessory use to the YMCA. As a component of the proposed project, the pr um, project will achieve a leadership in energy and environmental design, in other words, called LEED, silver certification. The project includes a request for deviations to the development regulations for the exterior, uh, exterior refuge and recycling material storage, fencing, offsetting planes and signage as outlined in the report to the Planning Commission. This is the aerial photo. The project site is located at 151 YMCA uh, north of Imperial Avenue and west of Interstate 805 within the Southeastern San Diego Community Plan and the um, Central Imperial II redevelopment project area. This map identifies the boundaries between the city of San Diego and the county. The property is in the MF2000 zone of the, uh, the Southeastern San Diego Plan District. This is the proposed um, site plan showing the location of the new buildings, which is in the location of where the old building is. And to answer the um, commissioner's questions that come up, the actually to address the drainage and the filtration for the M4 permits for water quality, it's over in this area. This is a uh, this is um, perspectives of the proposed new facilities. This is the facility at the entrance, and a view from the uh, as an as you're walking in, and also a view from the back end. This is actually the glassed area or the enclosed areas for the pool. The main um, level floor plan contains the gymnasium, multi-purpose rooms, child care, and kids act adventures front desk, locker rooms, and bathroom facilities. And just east of the main area is the pool and pool, and pool enclosure. And this is, a, is the floor plan for that. The second floor contains the fitness and wellness area and the office for the facilities. This is the proposed landscaping plans and also the landscaping plans that indicate the buffers and the trails. Uh, the buffer is from the Choice Creek and the trails is to connect the Choice Creek trails from Interstate 805 all the way down to Imperial Avenue. On January 11, 2016, the Southeastern San Diego Planning Group voted 8-0-0 to recommend approval of the project with no conditions. Staff's recommendation to the Planning Commission is to approve the addendum to the uh, addendum number 402960 to the Environmental Impact Report and adopt the Mitigation and Monitoring Program and approve conditional use permit number 1412702, Plan Development Permit number 1412703, and Site Development Permit number 142704 as presented. This concludes staff's report. Thank okay. you. Do you have any questions for staff regarding the presentation? All right, I'll open the public comment. We have two speaker slips in favor of the project. Um, looks like first we have Dean Smith for questions only. Dean, are you here? Thank you. And Michael Brunker. Is Michael here? Thank you. Also for questions only? All right, thank you. <coughs> um, 
Commissioner Whalen. Thank you. I, I just had a couple of questions. Since the site is, is right on Joyous Creek, uh, it presents an opportunity for improvements in water quality that are over and above uh, project specific. It appears though that the site is isolated by the berm that uh, creates sort of a barrier between the, the Y and the creek. Is, is that a correct understanding? That is correct, sir. And the reason is because there is also a floodplain requirement and um, it's within the 100-year flood, 100 floodplain, uh, which is actually, I did not include that in my slides, but it is in your uh, report, and it's uh, attachment 10. Okay. Uh, the second question is on, is on attachment 15 on the bio basin. Is there someone who can speak to how that's going to function? So it will capture... Again, it flows into San Diego Bay, so it's exempt from hydro modification, but it's not exempt from treatment. Is, is this basin, which is planned to be the cleaning tool, and then it will drain into the creek? That is correct, but I think engineering can actually answer the staff. Yeah, that, that's correct. It, the, the basin will be the, the facility used to treat the stormwater on the site. Yeah. And then it will be held, settled, and is there a requirement that the city will be placing on this for maintenance? I'm not sure exactly the maintenance requirement, but we do any any stormwater devices uh, as part of that are permanent that we do require uh, a maintenance uh, mechanism for the device. And this is being private; there would be a private mechanism for that device. So the water board is saying that, that when they say perpetuity, they mean forever, which is, I guess, that's the meaning of perpetuity. But how is it the city will ensure that the maintenance is done because there are many many filled up sedimentation basins that don't get any maintenance right the, and that has been an issue in the past but um with with devices like these they they enter into agreement which runs with the land um and then there are in regular inspections by our stormwater department of these facilities uh, throughout the city to ensure that they are being maintained and uh, continue to function into perpetuity. Because you know that Wayne Chu is out there looking for opportunities to find the city. There's, there's no doubt, and that, that's been an issue in the past, and that's something that we take very seriously now. And we do have um, an actual uh, section department that, that's focused on ensuring that these devices are maintained and, and not you know, removed for other development or something like that, that we are um, locking them into place to follow with the land. So how, what kind of funding mechanism do you contemplate to ensure that this happens? I'm not sure what the funding looks like in terms of uh, the inspection routines. Mm -hmm. I, I know it's going to be costly, you know, to, to, mm -hmm. to um, follow all these different devices as, as, as we move forward here. But I, I think it's something that the, the city will have to take on and every city will have to take on because we, we need to ensure that these um, are maintained for my fellow commissioners they have several kinds of devices that work but they have to be cleaned uh, a lot or they quit functioning so I'm, I, I would be curious to s for a little bit more detail on the process as we go forward I know you guys just had a training session for folks but it will be important for us to be able to assure the water board that yeah It'll be taken care of in perpetuity. I, I agree, and, and we, we continue to strive to, to meet all the standards that continue to change as we, as we move forward here. N next hearing, can you just bring a little quick report on how the city is going to be managing this process? It'll be useful for us, because we get every single project now has it. Sure, I'll, I'll see what I can get some information for you. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Wagner. I'll start by uh, making a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we approve addendum number 402960, environmental impact report number uh, 106715, uh, um, schedule issue report 2005 031065 99001. 
1027 and adopt, adopt the mitigated negative, excuse me, that's a long one. <laughs> Adopt the mitigation monitoring and reporting program. Number two, approve conditional use permit 141-2702, approve plan development permit 141-2703, and approve site development permit uh, 141-2704 with comment. Second. Thank you. So I'd like to just opine for uh, a moment that often uh, with projects like these, uh, we get into that, to the sterility uh, of land use. Uh, but I would like to say that uh, this particular Jackie Robinson YMCA uh, has been uh, a magnet for success in this particular community uh, for at least 30 years that I know of. Uh, I can think of no less than thousands of young kids in this particular community uh, that have benefited uh, from the hard work and determination of uh, the executive uh, director's leadership uh, with regards to the Jackie Robinson YMCA. Uh, I think it's no small feat that you have a multi-million dollar facility uh, that will be uh, implanted into this particular community uh, and provide even greater resources for uh, underpriv underprivileged individuals. I really do believe that over the last many years, 30 years that I can think of, uh, that this particular uh, YMCA has reshaped the lives uh, of many kids uh, that have, would not have turned out the same way uh, if the Jackie Robinson YMCA uh, would not have been there uh, to promote their success, their attributes, uh, and uh, their skill set that they didn't know they had until they took part in a program with the Jackie Robinson YMCA. Uh, I'll tell you that 30 years ago, uh, I was the recipient of a scholarship uh, uh, for Mr. Brunker for basketball. I didn't turn out to be a basketball star, uh, but I still remember 30 years later uh, with regards to uh, uh, how important it was to provide kids like me from a working class family, the ability to go somewhere for a week uh, that didn't have the ability to do that. Uh, and that really did shape me. It shaped my uh, civic outlook and shaped my want and desire uh, uh, to take part in the civic process like we're doing so today. Uh, so for that, I want to say thank you very much to Mr. Brunker uh, and say thank you for the Jackie Robinson YMCA that has really uh, benefited uh, the city of San Diego for many, many years. Thank you. Commissioner Kiros. I will completely echo that. I agree with him entirely. Uh, having worked with many of the kids who come out of the Jackie Robinson YMCA, there is no question that you are absolutely essential to this community. And that is, I'm going to make a comment, and if you want to respond, you're ha I'm you know, happy for you to do that. But you know, the Jackie Robinson YMCA has taken the place of the city in its recreational facilities. And they've been doing that for a long time. And I'm very concerned in the addendum where you have the diffs that they're going to have to pay. Um, it seems unacceptable that for a, an organization that has taken the place of the city with respect to the recreation and you know, the things that the children need to do, um, for them to then have to pay everything. It seems to me that the city owes them for taking over those jobs. And I'm, I'm disappointed that the city didn't step forward and say, for all of the work that you've done to replace what we should have been doing, um, that we'll pay the diff fees. And, you know, I think that somehow or another we need to encourage uh, the, the organizations that do this kind of thing. And as with Commissioner Wagner, I'm just stunned that they have been able to come up with the funds to be able to do this. But I would like them to have a little extra to be able to provide the programs that they do so well. And so, you know, maybe it's something that you can discuss later on with the city to see whether or not that's something that you could do, um, because I think we owe it to them. But otherwise, I just want to thank you for everything that you do in this community. Thank you. Commissioner Pearson. 
Thank you, Chairman. Um, I wanted to go back <clears throat> to talk a little bit more about the Choyas Creek Enhancement Program. In the staff report on page five, it says the proposed development will not preclude the future implementation of the Choyas Creek Enhancement Program. Um, how is it contributing to the Choyas Creek Enhancement? I know it doesn't preclude it, but it has a major frontage along it, and I'm wondering what its contribution will be. I'll refer to staff on that. I'll, I'll address that one. Um, actually, we received some very good news just a few months ago, thanks to the efforts of the YMCA as well as um, other stakeholders in the community. Um, we were told that um, $6 million in state funds have been allocated for the restoration of Choyas Creek at this particular segment. So um, we're still working with the state. Um, the funds will go directly to the urban core of San Diego County. They're going to take the lead. Um, they're going to work closely with the city um, stormwater staff as well as de development services staff and planning. And they're going to come up with an enhancement plan for this particular segment and implement that over the next few years. That's terrific news. It always takes money to do these things. Um, and I think it's, uh, it may be part of the program too, but it's such a significant watershed and looking at ecosystems and drainage basins and native plant material, I'm hoping that there would be even an educational trail part of the design, which would be great with signage and local uh, and native plant material so that it's a, it's a lear living learning lab for young people. I'm seeing some nods in the audience and hopefully yeah. Brian, that can be part of this plan. Absolutely, a trail, educational trail system will be a component of the project. Terrific. Um, one minor question, and it may be somewhere in the material, I just didn't see it on the landscape plan. What is the width of this trail uh, and, and what are its materials? Uh, I'll try to um, answer that question. Or if the architect should step up and also. <laughs> if you look on um, attachment 15, the very last page, they do have also diagrams on the dent dimensions of the trails and stuff, but we also have the architect and the uh, staff here, the applicant staff, to answer that question. Uh, the trail for this project was designed by Estrada Landscape, who also did the Choyas Creek Enhancement Plan to begin with. So in order to move the trail restoration forward under a separate action, we have it limited to eight to four feet in certain areas, which may be expanded with the additional money in its decomposed granite, which is wheelchair accessible. I was gonna say, yes. so it's four feet at the minimum, it can't be five to me. You know, it has to do with um, going into jurisdictional areas and opening up permits through regional water quality control, Army Corps, and CDFW. We really wanted to move the project forward so we can provide this new recreational facility and come back and tackle that permitting later, which we all know takes multiple years in its own right. Yeah, and you don't want the tail wagging the dog. I'd rather see a trail in place that can meet as much as it can ADA. It sounds like most it of it is, is it's all going to be ADA. Yes, it is ADA. We okay. had our ADA specialist look at it, and it is. That was my other concern. It, it really needs to meet that. And, and um, so I did find that sheet. That's LDP 3. So that's the section drawing here that says it's three and a half feet to four feet wide, up to eight feet wide in some locations. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That answers my questions. I think it's a fabulous project. I'm really pleased to hear that the funding is in place to, this is a significant stretch of the Choyas Creek to get the funding to help do these improvements as well as have this be an outreach to children to understand what it is to be in nature, uh, what our local habitat is and um, enjoy the creek. I mean, I think, that's one of the reasons we're along it, is to take in the beauty of the creek, um, as well as have this fabulous facility. And looking at the deviations that are requested, because we do need to make findings when we have development permits, um, I support all the deviations. Thank you, staff and the applicant, for working on the design. I think the offsetting planes with the architecture, uh, particularly clearly uh, denoting where the entrance of the building is and the signage, you've done a, a, a great job, and I can support the deviations as well. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Austin. 
Yeah, I'm just going to add my two cents. Uh, this is a product type that we have some experience with as architects, and I want to congratulate uh, the whole team on developing such a wonderful program, executing it so well. Um, it's really well done. What a, this is going to be such a great amenity for that, that area. So kudos. Thank you. Um, I do have a couple of questions. One, and I appreciate the detail on Troyes Creek. Are we getting everything we need right now with respect to easements or anything else? Um, I know some of this looks like there's two pieces going. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, another issue has to do, uh, reading the report, it, it, this permit is going to replace all the previous permits. It's not really an amendment, or what is it? We do it as an amendment because it actually gets recorded, so it does replace the permits. But we have to do it as an amendment, so there's actually record of actually the permit, the original permit on that was recorded has been amended to take over this development. So, there are there any provisions of the previous permits that will be applicable? I'd refer, I'd refer to staff. Hang on. We didn't write in this permit. Um, we didn't write in that uh, those existing conditions would carry through. So if we were, if we wanted to carry through those existing conditions, we would have stated that in this permit. Okay, so they're not. So Correct. this permit stands by itself if I need to go read something about this project. It, Correct. Okay. And I think I, just not to be presumptuous, but previously there was an amendment to allow school uses here. And that is now going away, or has gone away. Yes, I, I believe that came up in the review process um, as, an, as an item. Uh, but again, we didn't carry that, that school okay. use through this permit. Thank you. Um, last question for the project, then I have a, a question, two questions or referrals to the attorney and to, to the planning department. Um, I have a presumption that this facility serves the community primarily, and I really have to think that, well, I saw the, the site plan, I was trying to find the 16 bicycle spaces, and I couldn't find them all, first of all. Um, probably because my eyesight is getting pretty bad. Um, but it just seems like 16 bike racks doesn't make sense to me for a youth-oriented facility like this. And if you could comment on that, is there flexibility? I know you're tight on space, and we've provided deviations for some of the, um, for some of the smaller storage facilities, I believe, the, the waste receptacle or recycling receptacle. But are, are 16 bike racks enough for essentially what's a park? It meets the minimum regulations well, requirements, I understand it meets but, the the minimum. but the architect may be able to answer questions about yeah. be providing additional spaces if needed. Well, you have a facility there today. I, I mean, is, do a lot of kids ride their bikes there? Is this, is this practical or is it they don't? I'm hearing a, the hearing a sh scene, excuse me. Why, why don't you come up and address that for me, please? Thank you. The reason for my question is we're trying to get people to walk and bike more in our communities, and we're working really hard to create um, streets that are a lot safer for those activities to encourage that. And it just, it just seemed a little bit of a non sequitur for me to see a 40-plus thousand square foot facility and a pool and just spectacular fields. By the way, I support the project. If, you. if you had any question at all, don't, don't have any doubt in your mind. Um, but I also want to make sure that we provide all of the types of amenities for people to to use that, and maybe bike racks are one of them. But please, I'd like to know what's happening out there. Great observation. I'm Michael Brunker, Executive Director of the Jackie Robinson Family YMC, and, and thank you all for your comments. And so I, I want to start with that, and, and I also want to thank Jeff and his team. You hear so many horror stories about developmental services. I have not seen any of it. I'm going to tell you right now, this has been the greatest team you could ever hope to work with. They have made this thing move quicker than anybody can. You ask our architect, our engineers, everybody involved. They've never seen things move like this, and so we're so thankful to all of you. We really appreciate you. Bikes are, you know, I'm passionate about biking as well, but in our community there's 52 gang sets, and a lot of kids that ride bikes get beat off their bikes, and they get stolen. So you don't see a lot of kids riding bikes. You see adults riding bikes, and there's a few, and they, and they fill up those racks, but I'm sure if there was a need, we want to encourage something like that, but the street safety, not vehicular, but just, you know, can you, is your bike going to be there when you get off it and you want to get back on? That's, that's the next question. So it's something I've always encouraged, not only that, but walking in, on the sidewalks where there are none, 
in our community, you know, just taking walks through the community that's not happening on a regular basis. That's where our wives become that hub where families can get on treadmills and walk for 30 minutes where they normally wouldn't walk through the community. So I, I get your point, and I think that's something we can definitely get to if we needed it. And, and I think the bike racks right now are on the backside of, of the facility as well where the fields are. So where you have the first the little Padre parks that are going to be totally restored, the soccer arena, the basketball courts, they're all around the backside right now. If well, I appreciate the honesty about some of the challenges of the yeah, there's, community. There's challenges because we have, and I'll tell you, we've had bike giveaways. We give away thousands of bikes at our Y, especially around Christmas time at our event. The first Saturday, the Saturday before Christmas, we have an event called Christmas with Character where 4,000 kids get gifts. And, and there's times where we'll give out hundreds of bikes at that occasion, and there's no shortage of kids that want the bikes, but where they're riding them is a whole different story. Well, I'm sure you'll, you'll respond if that, and I hope the day will come when it's much, people are using their bikes more and that exactly. they, they'll use them there as well. Right. Did you have something you wanted to add? Or? Well, if they did see a demand for more racks, there's places okay. in, the, in the, there's a lot of open place for that. It's not that tight of a squeeze because of all that recreation space. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Ken, I, I did yes. sign a speaker slip, so before I sit down. Oh, sure. I, I do want to thank you all, and, and once again, it really thank the process for the way it's worked. The creek was a big deal. You know, I appreciate your concern. Have you been in that creek lately? I would like to invite you to come with me because we are in the creek now. You know, so if you know anything about the creek from 805 to that street, that utility road that runs across it, it creates a dam and backs up all the sediment. It's like a rainforest back there, but what's growing back there is invasive species, the Arundo and everything else that's out of control. And so what's happened is with clean teams, with volunteer projects, the Rock Church came out with 800 volunteers to clean out what they could, but they can't go into the creek and touch anything in that creek bed because of the permitting that's required, right? So you got trees have been knocked down. So when it rained recently, What's flowing under 805, there's a 10-foot conduit right there, but it's all filled with bedrock. It's only about five feet squeezing through there, but, but we've been cleaning it. We, our kids have been going over there planting native plants and watering them with gallon milk jugs and, and with water and going across our day camp kids doing it. They're getting in there, and it's literally an island in the middle of a storm of a community that has nothing like that. So when we build a new Y and we have a park next to it, which is virtually what's gonna happen. This, this long range plan that the city's been dreaming about all along, like you said, it takes money to build it. And thanks to uh, uh, Shirley Weber at the State Assembly, she put $6 million into the state budget for Choyas Creek at the Jackie Robinson Family YMCA because staff insisted on that as well and we got it done. So we've raised $19 million to date. The Jackie Robinson YMCA has raised 19 million to get this done. We have some timelines now. We've got a Prop 84 grant that expires in 2017. So that's why the timing of this is real important. We've got the new market tax credits. They want you to get started yesterday, right? So that they can get new, more new market tax credits to spend more money on worthy projects in, in the city. Private donations. We've got the Major League Baseball All-Star Game coming in here in July. And they want to rest, restore the field as part one of their legacy projects that they leave behind. But they want a ribbon cutting on July 1st. Not a groundbreaking. So timing is everything now. This date is so special to us. We've had it circled on our calendar for so long. I just want to thank you for all of your support and all that you've done to help make this happen. Thank you very much. I want to thank you for putting together quite a coalition to make this, this vision come true. Um, two items for staff. One, uh, this kind of quirkiness about it being in the city and the county. Uh, this is a county pocket. Um, most of it is the Mount Hope Cemetery, so I have no expectation at all that that would ever be annexed to the city. But we're, we're outside of that um, cemetery footprint. Are there provisions in our general plan that talk about these, these uh, annex, I hate to reuse the A word, the annexations of the county pockets? Yeah, um, and in fact, in the recent update to the Southeastern San Diego Community Plan, um, there is a discussion of, of that. Okay, uh, it seems like it makes total sense in this particular case for that two point acre site plus acre site. Um, so maybe that can get taken care of someday because obviously the city's providing all the services to it as part of this facility. Uh, the other question is really to the attorney. I'm not sure you can answer it now, but to go to Commissioner Kuros's question, I think it's a really important one about the payment of diff fees. In particular, should a project like this pay park and rec diff fees? I mean, it's sort of like this doesn't make any sense. 
Um, there is a provision in the code that does allow for um, development to apply for a waiver of DIF fees. Um, that does go before the city council, but there are certain qualifications that they do have to meet. Um, it basically, the amount of the fee has to not be reasonably related to the uh, burden presented by the development. So that is available. I'm sure you're aware of that, perhaps. If, if not, jump all over it, because obviously there's, there's some real logic there to certain fees in, in particular. Okay, uh, any other questions? Can you just clear the lights? Okay, are we ready? Well, please vote then. And that passes unanimously 6-0. Congratulations. Why don't we take just a very brief five-minute break before we get the uh, staff up here for the mobility, uh, the downtown mobility plan.